just look, obviously, we're looking ahead to this Glasgow City game. It's a huge one on Sunday. Um, how are you feeling about meeting them so early in the season? It's good that it's not maybe the first fixture, but you do keep getting these Glasgow City fixtures earlier rather than having had a few games under your belt, although you've had more of a preseason. How, how's that? Yeah, I mean, if, if you could choose, we have to play them anyway three times. If we could choose, I would rather play them a little bit later, but it's early on the season, but it's early for both. Uh, for both teams so it's the same advantage or disadvantage for both teams so we just uh, will get on with it and you know I feel I feel confident I feel um, I, I like how the team is training and we will go to the game you know like like always trying to trying to get something from the game but knowing that that they are the champions and you know the the favorites but uh, we know we never minded that in the past and we don't we don't do now either yeah you put up a couple of good fights last season against them but never quite like got the three points have you taken lessons from what you learned from last season is are you going into this fixture feeling a little bit more confident in terms of your understanding of what this fixture is and means and what yeah you mean? i mean you know we did get the three points just later didn't count but we yeah. did, we did oh, yeah. get one of the three points <laughs> yeah but no yeah I, you know it's, it's the only team that beat us uh, last year so you know Obviously, I am preparing the game extra carefully in terms of tactically uh, with, mm -hmm. with the coaches on our own to make sure we don't make this adjustment because they are a very good team and very experienced team. So, yeah, I, I, I feel confident uh, that we will play a good game and hopefully we can get something from the game, as I say. But they, they are good. And the fact that they uh, lost yesterday, I think they are going to bring even extra fight on them because obviously they have to yeah. they have to try to come back to winning ways. It's a team that don't, don't lose often. So when they do, they need to make sure that they don't do two in a row. So we know they are going to be extra motivated and, and so so are we. Just quickly, I'll let someone else go, but um, is everyone available for tomorrow in terms of selection? And I'm going to ask this because I probably always ask this, is Natalie back yet? <laughs> uh, everyone is available for selection apart from Rebecca McAllister, who just uh, got a, a little knock in training. Uh, well, not a knock, a, a little injury in training, nothing major, but probably... Uh, probably would be out for the weekend uh, with okay. that. And then Natalie's in the last stages of recovery, but she won't be available for the fixture. You've touched on, you know, obviously the, how big a fixture this is against Glasgow City. How much confidence do you take from that result and the league opener against Aberdeen into this game? A lot of confidence because I think we play very well. Uh, we, we did a little oh. tactical adjustment for, for that game that we thought it would suit us. And I think the girls are secured to perfection. So I'm very happy with the, with the amount of knowledge that the team is able to get and, and how efficient we are in, uh, in everything what we do. So I really like I, I really like the performance, especially the first half. I think we were outstanding against a very good team, an energetic team like Aberdeen, uh, who are used to winning all the time. So definitely it, it really helped. Uh, we came from two defeats in the Champions League, uh, you know, for a team that, like us that don't used to lose often. Two defeats in a row, it hurt, but it was brilliant that we were able to, to, to beat Aberdeen and we are back into a very positive state of mind and, you know, uh, very confident in the team. We know that they are, they are a very good team and, you know, on paper, the favourites, we know that, but uh, I'm confident that we maybe we can get something from the game. And is the aim to keep that pressure on Glasgow City, assuming we see the same dominance we've seen from them previously, in terms of laying a, laying a marker down this weekend, how, how much is that in your thoughts? Uh, for me, really, uh, the only thing I care is about the three points. Uh, if we can get the three points, you know, whatever is it's early stages, uh, whatever the results is, is not going to have a massive impact in the final uh, position on the table in the league. So, but for me, it's about the three points. We treat the game as a, as a cup final. Everyone is preparing like a cup final. You can see the the the, the hunger of the girls in training because they are fighting for a spot. And, and yeah, we treat the about three points. But of course, you know. Uh, if they if they do lose, uh, you know, it's two defeats in a row. So maybe psychologically, that's something that could hurt them. But that's that's for for them to worry about. For me, so I'll try to get our second win in a row in the league, and and um, we will try to fight to get it. Despite we know, as I say, twenty times that is is very difficult. And you've added some real quality to the squad in the summer as well. Seven new signings. We've seen a host of them. I think four made their, their league debut at the weekend. How much of a statement of intent is that in terms of the squad that you're building here? 
Yeah, obviously we, we do we do a lot of scouting. We do a, a psychological profile of the players, not only obviously based on talent, but based on the ability to play the way we want them to play, the bravery that we need in players. So we did a lot of work uh, of the scenes to try to bring the best players. And I think you know uh, you saw last week that you know everyone who got the debut, they they you know they they were outstanding, and some of the girls that wow. didn't have the opportunity to start yet for us as well, they are training very well, so they are making my job very very difficult in terms of team selection but that's always a, a good problem to have but i think yeah adaptation in this team is very easy because the girls are lovely uh there are it's a very very good group it's a, it's a family and we are very welcoming and you know i think um, i'm very happy with the players that stay and help me to to you know to establish this ethos and the team values and with the new players how quick they settle and and, and you can see it there in the performances enjoyed the game at the weekend i was even even our own goals are pretty special to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it as well. I, most of the time, <laughs> apart from when we can see. What I was wondering is what I noticed about that game is that it was quite a, a a decent crowd that Aberdeen had and backing them. Um, great atmosphere. That's maybe something that the team has been lacking at the Celtic home games. And now we're moving over to the Penny Car Stadium on Sunday and. What message would you give to the Celtic support to come along and watch two Champions League sides fight it out for a place at the top of the SWPL? Yeah, I would I would encourage every every single not only Celtic fan but every single uh, women football fan in Scotland to come to watch the you know last season best two teams in the country fighting against each other you know in the first uh, first opportunity we got of, of uh, uh, this season. And yeah, as you say, last last week I think was fantastic to see the atmosphere. It wasn't uh, so friendly because they were obviously mainly Aberdeen supporters. Uh, you know, but we would love to see obviously a a, a very big uh, home crowd. Uh, I still remember the the first time we played City when I was here, and and the crowd was amazing, and we managed to score this winner in the last minute. And you know, it's an experience that I still remember every single day. So hopefully we can repeat something like that and hopefully with the same result but yeah would be good be would be great for us we do everything it's about it's about uh, our fans and uh, we want to feel their their support and we want to see them there Charlie Wellings is a, a center forward very much in the Celtic tradition quite a player we've got there yeah she, she's doing all right <laughs> no, she's here so she's, she's been she's been very good for us I, I know Charlie for a long time she uh, I follow um a few of the of the England youth setup because I was coaching a few of them and I I know them well and I know what she, what she could bring and you know um, as a person and as a player and I think yeah um, the contribution of Charlie has been outstanding and I think we haven't seen the best from her yet um, everything comes from the way we work and the, and you know the effort she put in and you know um, I think it's going to be a very very successful season for Charlie and hopefully as well for the team. So we've seen some very decent starts from the players that you brought in over the summer. Uh, Olaf's, Olaf's daughter uh, Gross is making the first team. Charlie Wellings is off to an amazing start, obviously. Uh, we saw Shen, Shen Mengyu coming off the bench against Aberdeen. Um, are there any plans to sort of introduce her into the first team? Is she just kind of just getting used to life in Scotland first? Or, or what's the plan there? Yeah, I mean, we need to be very patient with Shen. He's a young player, 19-year-old. She comes from China. Her English is not... a uh, at a very great level yet, so we got we got somebody uh, a translator helping with her. So we have to be very patient. It's a very talented player. We are very happy with her in terms of integration into society and into the team. I think he's doing very very well because she's a lovely girl and and you know she gets on well with the girls. In terms of football, this the uh, British football is very very different than Chinese football much more intense uh, you know so she will need a period of, of adaptations here you don't have time to think and and she also get you know um when we do meetings it's easy because you got the translator but live feedback in training is more difficult because we don't have time to stop and explain everything so you know uh, we are going to be extra patient but it's a player that we have definitely have 100 percent faith on her i think she's going to be a, a terrific player uh, for Celtic, and I think she's going to have a fantastic career. So, um, you know, we will go day by, we will go day by day and, and see when when she's going to be able to start and to and to help. But so far, she's she's doing fantastic for considering you know the the, the situation. Brilliant. Um, and just wondering, obviously, you're not one to to disrespect opponents or to or to talk any sort of opposition down. But 
Um, just wondering, in terms of Glasgow City, they've had a lot of upheaval this summer with uh, Scott Booth, obviously, uh, moving down to, to Birmingham City. Would you say this is, I mean, obviously, there's, you know, the timing in terms of the fixtures, and, and, we've, and we've covered that, but do you think, generally speaking, it's probably quite a good time to play Glasgow City as they're kind of integrating all these kind of new parts together? I, I have to say that it's never a good time to play Glasgow City. You know, it's a, it's a very tough team. I think, you know, that's the first game they lose uh, since last year. Uh, and they are not only winning, but they are winning very convincingly. Uh, they won both games in the Champions League, which we were there. It's not easy, although, of course, the champion pathway is so much easier. But still, there are there are teams that have been champions in their countries. Uh, for me, I, I definitely wouldn't play Glasgow City down at all. I think they are if as strong as last year or stronger. Uh, it's a it's different coach, slightly different tactics, maybe more fluidity at front, uh, maybe less fluidity uh, playing out. But, you know, uh, I think they got a, a good coach. They are well drilled. Uh, they are very, very dangerous. Uh, and, you know, we, we will have to, to treat them like the favorites because they are. So, yeah, not good time, but, you know, we have to play them and we are very, very excited and, and, and confident as well. So just a very, very quick yes or no, if I've got time. Um, you played Aberdeen, who have cool managers could you ever do that? Co-managers? Yeah. Yeah. If, you know, if you bring here Pochettino, I would be happy with that. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. No problem. What have the girls learned from their two Champions League ties and what have you learned from that and how can you put that into practice against Glasgow City on Sunday? We, so we learned, especially the first game against Levante, tactically, I personally learned a lot. They were they were brilliant. They man, managed their spaces very, very good. The timing was excellent. Uh, very, very strong team, uh, apart from obviously the technical ability. So that in terms of tactics, we learned a lot because we we never compete before against a team of that level, that good. Um, matter of fact, they, they played the, game, the first league game against Real Madrid, who yesterday beat Manchester City and they smashed them 4 nil. So that tells you the, 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 the quality of, of the team we face. So in terms of that, obviously we learn a lot because we play a team that were that was much better than that. We learned that we are a very strong team mentally because even when we were massive on the underdogs, we were able to compete and they end up asking for the ref to blow the final whistle. And that was the best compliment we could have that day. And then, you know, we learn a lot about each other. As a family, we spend a lot of time together competing in Europe. I mean, the feeling is, I cannot even describe uh, what it means to be to be there with, with, with the team uh, every single day. Just, you know, uh, it's just fantastic. So yeah, we learn, we learn a lot. And definitely we learn that we want to be there every single year. So if we are not there, it's because we are going to have two teams that are better than us. But we will try our very best because definitely we, we want to come back there every year. And how much of an acid test is it for your new signings on Sunday? Because presumably you're bringing these players in to challenge Glasgow City because they are the, 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 the boogeyman in the league. Do, do you think they can make a big impact on the game and kind of put down a marker for the rest of the season? Yeah, for us, it's about, uh, first it's about ourselves. Of course, you've got a team that has won the last 14 titles in a row. That's unbelievable in, in, in any league, in any in women game, in the men game. That's, that's really impressive. Uh, and there's a team that used to winning. And they kept so many of these key important players that are very experienced, that, uh, you know, they don't, they don't get the emotions, get the birth from them. So they are very, very good competitors. And uh, for us, it's about get it, getting better each year. And I think this year we are a little bit better than we were last year. We lost uh, a few important players, but then we replaced them with players that are as good or if not better. So I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the squad. I think, you know, we are going to be able to compete like we compete. But this time we got a little bit more pace, a little bit more technical ability. And hopefully, because we are longer working together, a little bit more of tactical knowledge in case, you know, uh, things in the game change to spot it without taking too much time before we get hurt. So, yeah, uh, I think we are better. And I think, you know, uh, every single year does... Celtic aim to be a little bit better in terms of infrastructure is unbelievable. Like, uh, we now report every day to Celtic Park. We have breakfast together. We have lunch together. The gym at Celtic Park. I mean, you know, we, uh, training ground is Barrowfields, our training ground, our base. I mean, we couldn't ask for anything else. It's fantastic. So, and that's something we didn't have last year. So it's, it's constant growth and, and the team as well is constant growth. So hopefully we will see a, a better year, but we know the other teams as well grow. So still is a very, very good fight. Oh, so that's quite interesting that you are actually in like, Lennox Town and, and doing things together. Why wasn't that implemented last season? And do you feel that you're getting backed by the club more and more as as the, the weeks and months go on? 
Yeah, it's not it's not a Lenox Town. We are at Barrowfield, which oh, is sorry, the, Barrowfield, sorry, sorry. Old training ground. Yeah, yeah. La- last year basically was because we have to train in the evenings, which you know every day training in the evenings. Uh, we train only a couple of mornings, but this year we are like totally professional. We train only in the morning, so then we have access to, obviously to the best to the best facilities. So it's in terms of all, uh, only what it suits us best. And yeah, responding to your question, yeah, the club is uh, is determined to make the, the women's side every year better and better. And every year they are doing a further effort, which we are delighted about. So um, in, a, in a sustainable way. So we know, we make sure this program is going to be lasting forever and it's going to be successful and a little bit growth each year. So in that terms, we are we are delighted with the efforts that the club is doing, especially after a pandemic, which is so hard for every club. And, you know, uh, we have seen amazing growth in, in terms of infrastructure and, and, and resources. Fran, were you at Broadwood yesterday? Uh, no, I, I watched it in TV. Um, but I, I watched it and I was making notes during the game. So yeah, I, I watched the game with detail and then I rewatched it back after. So you can ask me something about the game if you want, I remember. <laughs> it, it was very, very hot in the stadium, as you'll be aware. I think, I think it was the hottest day in, in September in Scotland this century. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. I absolutely love that, that type of temperature. <laughs> We all do, but it must have taken a lot out of the Glasgow City players. Do you feel that's to your advantage on Sunday? I think it won't have ma- massive impact in the first half. It could be maybe in the second half. If we are good in the first half, it could be, especially if the result is uh, to, to our favour. You know, I think that game, the way it went, went ahead and then finally they, they, they didn't they lose the game. I think mentally that was tough, especially because the, the financial rewards that were on a stake, it was a massive, massive game. Uh, and I think, you know, it, it's, it's heart, heartbroken, uh, heartbreaking. Uh, so I think that could take up. But as I said before, they are very experienced players. They've been, they've been winning for so many years. Uh, I, I think, I personally think they are strong enough to just put this away and, and compete, you know, brand, brand new day, try to come back to winning, to winning ways. Now, if we are good on the day, if we dominate the game, then it could, it could be costly in the second half in terms of they won't have the legs to probably match our intensity, but uh, it's difficult to say now. Definitely, is uh, we got a little bit more advantage than if they didn't play on Wednesday, of course, because that's more minutes on the legs. And finally, for me, will you have any specific plans, Fran, to to try and contain Priscilla Chinchilla? We got a specific plans and like a, a very very detailed game plan to try to control uh, all eleven players. Uh, if we try to control Chinchilla, then you got Ode, or then you got uh, Davison, or you know it can it can be anyone or Claire Shine. It doesn't matter. You cannot control one player. I she she did well yesterday, but against us the last game she didn't do so well. We we managed to control them all uh, in the nil nil game in the last game. So you know yeah, it's, it's about it's about us controlling them all. So no specific plan for Chinchilla, but for all, all 10. Looking towards Sunday, I know you kind of just touched on it a wee bit there. What do you see as being the, the key threats posed by Glasgow City? Is there any kind of area of the park that you'll need to focus on in particular as you're planning for the match? Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we will try to impose our game and we know the difficulty of this when you when you are facing, you know, the, the, the champions, uh, the, the league holders. Uh, but we will try to impose our game. We will try to, to be to be aggressive like we always are. We will try to compete better than them. And then we know their threats. You know, their threat, they, they can be they can play out. And if they press, they are very good being direct. They work well with the second balls. And then they got three players at front that are very, very fast. And then at times as well, they interchange positions. And if we switch off, that could cost us uh, opportunities for them. So, yeah, we will, we are working with this all week. And, and hopefully hopefully we will be able to... Um, to play well and compete well against them and hopefully to, to, to win the game, which is what ultimately what we want. But definitely they, they are good. They're a good team and they are well drilled. Yeah, and uh, having lost Lisa Robertson for the season, uh, Nicholson and then Anna Philby's loan spell ending, uh, how pleased are you with the way that the mix of new players and those who maybe changed position slightly have stepped up for you so far this season in the middle of the park? Yeah, you know, for us it's all, it's all about uh, our senior player that has been here for long time that Celtic means the world to them, not only as a football team, but as an institution. For them, it's something more than a football club. And those players helped me to, to, to convince the new players that what an amazing club they joined. Uh, and that's why you see the fight. So for me, the names are almost irrelevant. We lost very good players. Uh, Anna Philby probably is one of the uh, of, of the players that make the better impasse last season. But then we brought other players that are straight away, they are making, uh, you know, 
massive impact. We lost our top goal scorer uh, for the for four years of the last five in Sarah Ewens, but then you got Charlie who already scored uh, 40% of the goals in, in only one league game and the precision friendly. So, you know, we replaced the players that left, which were very good and very important for us, but we replaced them with players that are equally good. And, you know, maybe we will see at the end of the season they have been even better. So it's about it's about the team. It's not about the individuals. And, uh, you know, it's about uh, we how we play 11 together. Uh, it's not about one players. And I'm very happy with how we are playing. You mentioned earlier that Glasgow City were the only team that you lost to last season. Um, now, games like that obviously can determine the destination of where the title ends up. With this only being the second game into the season, is that something that's already playing on the mind? Is that something you try and install within the mindset of the girls that if you win this game, it gives you that edge as you go towards trying to win the title this season? I don't I don't want to put... First, I don't want to put this pressure on the girls because we shouldn't be thinking about winning the title. We should be thinking about winning the three points. Uh, as you say, you know, I've been here two years and, and Glasgow City is the only team in Scotland that has beat us. And that hurt. And when we beat them, it didn't count. And that hurt. So for me, you know, personally, it's, it's a game that I really, really want to win. Uh, I really would love to win that game. But I know they are they are the champions for a reason. They are, you know, they have been the best team in the country for 14 years. Uh, and there is nothing new this season. They are still outstanding team. Uh, in terms of how the game on Sunday is going to affect the league, I think it's almost irrelevant. It's almost irrelevant because first, because we have to play them two more times, and second, because. Rangers are very strong this year. Hips are very strong this year. Aberdeen uh, are a team that they're going to cost uh, points to some of us. Uh, the same with the Spartans. You know, it's, it's a much stronger league that was mm-hmm. uh, last season. So, so yeah, in terms of the league, I don't think it's any... But in terms of us and our belief and, and you know, uh, obviously the three points is what, is what matters the most. So we really want to have them. You mentioned uh, earlier that you're now sort of doing full time working at Bar- uh, Barrafield, coming back to Celtic Park. Speaking of Celtic Park, obviously as part of the men's season ticket this year, there's a, a game to be played at Celtic Park. Is there any discussion so far as to what game that would be, and would you like it to be against the likes of a, a Glasgow City or even a Rangers to try and draw such a big crowd? Yeah, uh, it was uh, a discussion to maybe maybe the Aberdeen, but finally uh, it could it couldn't work for some external issues, uh, but it will be, it will be, uh, we will play here at least one or two times, at least. Uh, the fixture for me, you know, that, that's for the club and marketing people to see what's the best fixture, because the aim of that fixture is to have as many fans as possible, to try to get uh, the stadium as full as possible and, and, and for everyone who come to have an amazing day. So that's for, for people who understand this better than us. For us, you know, if we could play here every, every, week, every uh, game, at home, then we would. So, you know, if we if we can play one or two games, we are absolutely delighted because the experience we had when we played here was unreal. But we were missing the most important thing, which were our fans weren't here. Yes, I look forward to seeing you playing at Celtic Park. And just finally, Fran, the, the Scotland squad was announced earlier in the week and obviously Lisa Robertson was the only Celtic-related player to be included within that. Do you think that there will be a space going forward in future squads for some of the girls, considering that they are one of the best sides in the league and the players are certainly coming on and developing very quickly. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I say before, I think we got the most talented under 19 players in the country. Uh, by far, some of them are currently with us and playing uh, almost every week. And other, other, others are on loan to make sure they get these minutes. So I'm sure it's just a matter of time. Uh, obviously, they, they will be more players uh, in, the, in the Celtic squad. You know, uh, he's the first squad for Pedro. He was, he was with us. Last week, he spent a day with us and met the girls. And so I know it's a matter of time. We uh, we are patients. I, I would love uh, Celtic players to represent Scotland national team. I think some of them are already good enough, but that's not my call. And we will just be working to make sure uh, when, when Pedro do the, the next team, hopefully we can see some some Celtic names of players that actually are playing with us. Uh, but, you know, uh, obviously, uh, we have to be very respectful from manager job. They do their job very meticulously, and, and I totally respect the, the team selection. We just will try to make it difficult for the for the next uh, selection. We make sure some Celtic players are there.